Hello, my name is Rivas Mayoki and I am a sci-fi writer and apparently a reviewer. Ha, oh, that's a new thing. I was reviewing a few K-dramas and then I thought, well, it would be just plain unfair not to review my favorite actor and probably the favorite person, James McAvoy. I love his opus and I have no objection on any of his performances, so you can expect praise. <laughs> I don't know, I just don't have anything bad to say about him. Uh, but of course, the uh, movies he was in were various, as all things we do in life. And I, I will find something skewed to tell, talk about it. And I wanted to start off by talking about Victor Frankenstein. I know, the infamous one that uh, flopped. <laughs> and the one I watched most times than any of his movies. Uh, I usually watch his movies once. I only rewatched Wanted and uh, Victor Frankenstein and Victor Frankenstein I watched five times and that's really a lot for me because I have an excellent memory <laughs> and I rarely uh, watch movies more than once except if it is for uh, a research of fan fiction. And just to so you know, if I write fan fiction about something, it's more of a critique of something that I love than a praise, because it uh, tries to fix flaws that annoyed me. <laughs> anyway, I haven't written any fan fiction about Jason, James McAvoy's work, because I see no flaws in him. Never mind. Uh, Victor Frankenstein, I must stay focused. <laughs> anyway, uh, Victor Frankenstein... Uh, is important to me from more of a personal standpoint than from a movie standpoint because uh, let's just say that I can really relate to a story about a crazy genius obsessed with his work <laughs> who secludes himself from the world to do the work the world hates anyway uh, so it is easy for me to watch a movie that humanizes the scientist that made the monster. But uh, I get why it flopped. I get why people disliked it. Because uh, not only because the story was a bit convoluted and there was uh, characters that were excess, uh, too many characters that were not followed properly. And uh, that is the problem of storytelling. And uh, the another minor problem is uh, I think that they employed too many Sherlock uh, actors, British Sherlock. Uh, and uh, since it's happening in Victorian era, that is very close uh, to Sherlock Holmes, it provoked, I don't know, it uh, takes you out of the movie. You just, oh, like, look, Molly Hopper. Oh, look, they're talking about babies. She's acting like a scientist. And it's just too much uh, to have her and Moriarty at the same place. It's just, I don't know, it's created some kind of, even I was like, oh, look, Molly. Oh, look, Moriarty. <laughs> and uh, it's just, uh, I don't know, it was distracting. I think that was a poor casting choice. And uh, the detective itself, that played by Moriarty, our dear Jim, <laughs> is uh, that... Uh, um, we don't follow him thoroughly and he's not fleshed out as a character, more as a monster to serve instead of Frankenstein and uh, all his flaws are, are is that he's religious and he just gets killed off and it's not satisfying in any manner and I think that it does take away from the movie. Uh, besides that, I think that the main Thing that made audiences turn away is that we are not ready to see the mad scientist that plays with nature as a good guy. We are just not ready to forgive him. We are in the era of monster worshipping. We are in the era of uh, where, where Dracula and Frankenstein are uh, characters in a movie uh, for children, <laughs> animated movie, and uh, it's just... Um, this era is not really suitable for a movie that features a monster that is dehumanized and that is the real monster. And the, the scientist himself, um, 
we see him breaking laws of nature and I think that people are still re- really very uncomfortable with the seeing that. And I think that is the main reason that the movie flopped because the movie had such great visuals and it was thought out uh, really well besides the confusions with characters and I think that they uh, captured the er- era it happened wonderfully I adore the scene at the b- beginning in the zoo <laughs> where he jumps or I-, I adore that scene I could rewatch that scene over and over again it's just perfect scene their chase and uh, their escape so that's it my opinion why Victor Frankenstein flopped at the box office and <sighs> I still think that it's a movie that will become a classic. The uh, forget or the movie that people find later on and find that it is really very well done and executed and acted and the story is beautiful and I think that it shows us the fa- facets of people we rarely see. The obsessed ones. <laughs> anyway, the the story itself, the movie itself, gave me uh, such a clear understanding of archetypical toxic relationship between an obsessed genius and his uh, servant in a part of my life when I really needed that, uh, and it's um, it will be always treasured by me. Anyway, maybe I will watch it soon again to see does it still resonate now that I'm out of the dark waters and into the plain fields when I'm quite happy with myself and my life. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you on the other side when I think of something else to talk about. Bye!